Enjoy the show. Play on the tiny. <laughs> I'm not what? touching the chicken. You know what? That might actually be the title of the podcast. My midichlorians be working overtime. They get some delicious bread. Mm. You know, Noir? Yeah, Bordeaux. Why is this costume ripped? Well, it was made for Tom Holland, but I wanted to try it out, see how I'm, <laughs> see if I fit. I'm going to teach you everything I know, and we are going to be a dominant power in the galaxy. What are you doing? And then they die. the rule of two. Right? <laughs> uh, the story behind those two things, uh, Dave, is the cardboard cutout of Kelly right there. We have our friend Kelly Collins. He, yeah. he is uh, uh, part of our podcast, but he had a habit in the past and still has a habit of canceling out on this from time to time. I was about to say, so he's not notice, here, man. He's not. In what the do you mean? So, um, this is exactly so, why we have him. Episode 146, it called The Cackle of Kelly's. Hmm? I trolled right his Facebook and took pictures of mm -hmm. his Facebook, and we made cardboard cutouts of him. So, and then we, we uh, showed them to him and uh, on episode 146, and it was needless to say glorious. You know what? Oh, <laughs> <fabulous>. <laughs> and then, and then the, the, the little, the, the little voice that you hear say one punch is my son Connor at the age of three. Yes. Oh, wow. So well spoken, too. He's so adorable. He is, oh, yeah. he is six years old now. So. We have we have a bunch of audio drops, but you bring up an interesting point, old man, because one, we're live. Welcome, gang. Um, two is that I've we've been doing the end credits here, and I've been talking to Dave, and I have hey, not boy. explained why there is a cardboard cutout sitting right next to me this entire time, but he's been a pro about the whole thing. I figured the camera froze and it was someone in mid sentence saying, Hey, <laughs> no, but, welcome gang to the 317th purge hangers and wall hangers media network presentation. This is none other than the Triforce podcast, of course. And I am your host, Matthew Bugrill, the Matt man. To my left is cardboard Kelly. And in the purge hanger box, we have none other than Christopher Bristow, the old man, but our special guest, David Wiscavich, director, producer, and Delco native, known for suburban Sasquatch, Malevolent, Ascent, and Tartarus. Welcome, Dave. We Thank you. love, I already love having you on. We've had a great conversation so far. Um, Anytime, I I'll have ruin to say. Just give me some time, I'll ruin everything. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, my um I, I was first first met you at uh the ACPW wrestling event, which um listening to you on commentary, I was laughing hysterically. Like uh I I just it was just so much fun just because you know, I mean I was a part of the event, but like being able to listen to it as a fan, um, you know, because and, and I always like when people from outside of of that arena come back in and do and and be a part of it, just because it's it's nice to see what their take is on it, and just watching and listening to you and listening to Mark and yeah. Ryan and Sheik play off of you, that was just entertaining. Oh, thank it, you. It thank was you it was it was good television and good and good audio. So I had so much thank fun, you. I, and I have to watch, you know, because like uh, I'm very old school, so. My, my humor just is like anything that's out there is open for poking fun at. And we, we certainly need that in this world. We need a bit of levity and humor. So I just try and joke about Absolutely. everything. But during that commentary, because I'm having a great time, I'm, I'm wanting to rattle off jokes left and right. That's just my nature. And Mark leans over at me one point after he was touching my thigh. And he says, that's Mark. Yeah. I did not know that, <laughs> that. You know, I, I, I didn't stop him. And he, he said, like, oh, you know, you know, guy, you know, we got to be, you know, got to be a little on the serious side. I'm like, oh, man, maybe I should pull my jokes back. So plus, I also know, I don't know the velocity of my jokes. So I'm not sure if I should be faster. So sometimes I tend to spew out a lot of jokes, a lot of ideas constantly. So, oh, yeah, I, know I know how that feels. I know I, the type. I, I actually know how that feels there, Dave. I know I, the type. I, yeah. I, I live with the person um, above in, on my Zoom window, but below you. <laughs> on, on his on his screen right now. <laughs> so I do. It's a shame day. that you I'm feel sure, that I'm, way I'm about sure Cardboard Kelly. 
Mark Gervais. <laughs> Mark <laughs> Gervais <laughs> says Dave has. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it's it's to, to what you're saying. This is like positivity is the main thing in this world, and it's it's severely lacking in 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 this day and age. And we need to kind of be, you know, use our mediums for a force of good, and just you know try to make everything a little bit lighter. You know, the the next day forward. And if you can't do that. That's you know. well said. And I have to I have to admit, there's sometimes I think about some things I wrote and I put in my films. I'm like, oh, gosh, that sounds so offensive. Maybe I should re-edit it. And I'm like, well, I don't think so. It's an artifact of the time and it's an artifact of the history I grew up with. So if we have as, as a species evolve and say, well, that's offensive, it's not funny, then we have to look at where we came from so we know not to go back there. Uh -huh. But Correct. until until somebody corrects me, like my daughter says, I'm like, oh, daddy, you can't joke like that nowadays. All right, well, until that happens, I'll, I'll, I'll keep joking. Yeah, and, and, and you know, we, you know, there has been similar conversations had, and it, it's, but it's about, you know, just because it was a product of the times during that time doesn't mean it's okay now, but, it, but those things still have to exist in order for those things to want to learn from and to get a litmus test of where you need to go forward. I well, don't think I want to talk on this podcast. You sound so <laughs> well spoken, Chris, and I feel like I just came off the street that's picking that's gravel up and shoving it in my pants or something. That's where <laughs> that's where I come in because <laughs> we'll bring it down a couple levels. Don't worry. Don't worry, Dave. Oh, thank you. Thank goodness. <laughs> we are yin and yang, honestly. Um, oh, that's, that's, so why, that's, that's why we work. Oh yeah, we we work because there is an open communication line sometimes, but mainly because it usually ends with us flipping each other off. But you know. yeah, <laughs> he's that's, down here. I, I think that's wonderful. Is so that's yin and yang from a physical perspective? So that's I think that's so wonderful. Oh, m mental too, because he's completely organized, and I am a I am a complete mess. <laughs> <laughs> I am a hundred percent a mess, <laughs> except with uh, computer wires. Oh, oh yeah. My computer wires are horrible. But well, I'm, I'm, my main for thing. For that, I'm just going to exit stage right. <laughs> <laughs> but my main thing here was that there's a thing that, that to what you're saying with jokes. And I think it's very a, a very prominent talking point right now because there's a lot of people say woke culture. But there's a lot of oversensitive people who don't necessarily – have thick skin and they inflict their views on other people and we also have this uh rise in public awareness of just toxic people in general and then you have all these people with a social media at least one real completely, yeah completely understand i mean i i admit i i don't know and i don't care about knowing what it means to be woke like mm -hmm. i'm sure that there's people i know that would say to me oh dave you're you're woke or you're not woke. I, I don't know. I, I just laugh when people make comments or insults like that. Cause it doesn't matter to me. Like if, if I'm not, if I'm not at the level where I should be sensitive to a certain group of people, which I think is what the basic definition of woke would be. I'm guessing yeah. if, if I'm yeah. wrong, someone correct me. If I'm not at that level, then somebody would say to me, well, well Dave, you can't make jokes about, let's say a, 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 an Asian person's accent, or you can't make jokes about somebody who fell down the steps. Oh, okay. Well, First, I want to know yes, that you why that's interesting that we've changed the culture. Mm -hmm. And second, well, how offensive is it? Like everybody doesn't like it or just a select few people maybe that well, I won't joke around that. How hurt I mean, were they when they fell down the steps? What's that? How hurt were they when they fell down the steps? I guess that well, would be that's it, the, that would be the qualifying YMH question, right? Uh, there's a the where, they, where you got hurt. Look, there's <laughs> there's a whole bunch of factors to that joke that I can jump off in any premise here. OK, because. How hurt right. were they? Because sometimes, like uh, the infamous, uh, I'm going to squash grapes on a stage from the news reporter lady, when she is gasping for air, I am gasping for air because I am laughing so hard. There are yeah, some okay. physical injuries. Like at my job, we have a glass pane window, and then right next to that is a door. People will be looking at their phone and walk full force into that glass window. First... 50 times. It was funny. <laughs> <laughs> After that, you start to get concerned. Like, are you okay? Because then you start thinking CTE. Like, how many times did this guy run into this door? Is there a pill for that? You know? A lot of questions. Dying. See, that's hysterical, right? That's just great. <laughs> but, you know, if we get to the point where we're so cautious and sensitive, then we can't explore boundaries. We can't move beyond them. We're so 
held by this popularization and that popularization is just a spike it's a moment of time like because we have the immediacy of of so many of these social media platforms mm -hmm. an issue is around the world instantaneously debated thrown back and forth and nobody seems to take and consider you've got a plethora of people with various intelligence social engagements understanding of neuropsychology all weighing in and there's a good number of people and i'll count myself amongst them that i'm not aware of a lot of things i really don't care to be aware and i would put a probably a very good analytical thought behind a lot of this but i don't want to weigh in on it because it just doesn't matter to me yeah the downside too. the downside to social media in my opinion is the loss of true collaboration on an idea mm -hmm. because yeah. for the for the true like for the hyper intellectual for them to grasp an idea they might they might quickly you know figure out a solution or present a solution very quickly whereas like for the layman i i consider myself like i'm mildly above a average intelligence like i'm very intuitive and like that but you always there are some you things way that, too many that, smart words for that statement sir just because i have a high just every, because i have a high understanding IT of the guy <laughs> work for me. everyone who works in it thinks they're a genius <laughs> I am not. I don't think I'm a genius. I just you just I proclaim it from harder. time to time. There's a difference between the two statements. Okay. Yeah. Um, but like I was saying, just because did you see I have that split hair right there? Of the yeah. English language and hooked on phonics has worked for me. Does not <laughs> mean I am highly sir. intellectual. This just means like I don't have a high IQ. I have an above average high uh, IQ. You know what that means? Okay. You're not reading I, the room. I will say that you're not reading the room, sir. And not this room. I'm talking about the country room. You're not. You're not reading the room. Have you looked at Pencil Tucky? That's I a don't good need point. To. But but you know but 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 in consideration of the country, and I think this is one of the minor failings that democracy has, is that you have to include everybody's voice, which means you have the people who are easily led or, or gullible or just follow batshit crazy things. And there's no ability to have proper discourse to be able to allow them to think things or debate them. And the reason why that's a problem is, is now it's apparent that you can manipulate the masses very easily without them giving a second thought. And they'll just blindly say, I'm in with X or Y. And everybody's guilty of it. I mean, I'm sure I'm guilty of it, too, yeah. to some degree. But I try to apply as much analytical thinking as possible. A, a, good, a good movie for that. A good movie to that was, and I know we're getting on a tangent here, and we'll get to the story soon enough. But uh, we were we were movie... built off a soapbox. People should be used to this. <laughs> All right. So a good movie, a good movie on that is like how you can manipulate the power of the masses. Is thank you for smoking. Oh, and that was so good. Oh, I didn't oh. So, so I Aaron Eckhart film, and it's essentially this is like how to like how to win an argument was one of the things I pulled away from the from the movie. How to how to like conceptualize the argument and manipulate the power of the people this is like so essentially like wag like, the dog yeah. the easiest way to bring Never. this down yeah. was like yeah. well what makes oh. vanilla ice cream better than chocolate and it, like and because instead it's of vanilla the point of vanilla and chocolate is <laughs> like well i'm not like i don't just like chocolate i like strawberry i like vanilla i like i like mint you know like and he's just like, well, why can't we all like everything? And then it, because he, you know, because he made that argument with his son, it like opened up his eye, eyes about it's not just one thing. And then because he made those grand statements, like wide brush statements, everybody just started filtering in and just backing him. And for what reason? He made no point. But because so... he made everything feel included, everybody just latched on to him i'll what? have to take a look at that uh, that film that sounds fascinating I, I i love how we've moved from you know the uh, early i'm sorry the the late 20th century to the early uh late 20th century to the early 21st century so much of psychoanalysis has gone by the wayside and it's just all replaced by chemistry but it still goes back to the same principles which is that unconscious self and its ability to rear its head and how it just overrides our common thinking. Mm -hmm. And that's that hypothalamic response we have from yeah, evolution. You want to feel included. Away. That's that's where it comes down yep. to. We have, yep. you want, everybody well, wants to feel included. Animals. We're social animals. We want to belong. We want to be part of a group. Unlike me, I don't give up. That, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it it's okay. We get one place uh, one well placed one. You don't give a fuck. But the main thing that I take away from this conversation is that I should probably get a refund for those uh, 
twenty thousand dollars in spiritual stones that I just bought. Yes. Yeah. That was a bad purchase. Yeah. It was a bad purchase on my part. I, mean, I wouldn't it, have spent twenty thousand. I mean, I it, might have it, spent twenty thousand. It didn't improve your chakras, there, sir. No <laughs> chakra for you. I was supposed to come back one year. I was supposed to go Super Saiyan, but that's just another <laughs> disappointment. If only, right? Yeah, man. Just a couple of crystal s- stones. You got to I weave them into my shirts, man. I'd make is them. Not, a, I think we're looking hat, for. Is this always top heavy like this, or do you guys talk about fun things at all? Oh, we're we, going we, fun here we, because I wanted to bring it back here to more of what we talk about on a natural basis, which is the nerdy and geek culture, to where the 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 first question I have in still this interview segment. There have been a lot of people weighing in on Marvel movies and whether it's actually cinema to where you have film bigs like Martin Scorsese and others saying it's not film. You have, oh, I don't know, uh, Francis Ford Coppola's uh, family member, Mr. Nick Cage, saying it absolutely is film. He just wants to be super. Where do you weigh in on this? Because indie film is some of the most it's some of the most self impressionistic pieces that you can see, but also you can what? get a cult hit out of it, like Clerks. You can find different things that you will you'll see it pop up, like oh, it won awards at Sundance, and now it's on Netflix. Like, where do you see Marvel? And film, is it a popcorn movie? Is it a western? Where does this l- line up? Uh, I'll, can I jump on that first, Chris? So I think that's a, a yeah. great question. And, and I, I was I actually going to—I was back. actually going to tell you what Dave, what what Mark has said to you, Dave. He says Dave has nice thighs, and I've seen Tartarus. Dave ain't woke. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, I'll trust Mark on that one. I, have no idea. I don't even say I don't even know. I tell him I don't even know what woke is. And next time I see him, I'm gonna really show him what woke means. Tell him if oh. he did see Tartarus, okay. what happened in Tartarus was gonna happen to him. So Mark's oh. gonna say, oh. 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 that sounds like that can happen at July 16th. <laughs> so you're so you're saying Mark's gonna see your woke thighs. <laughs> well, if you open your eyes, you'll we'll see them. So, so look, in in 18, don't. Don't quote me on the date, right? It's close. So in 1867 or 1868, a group of artists were refused to be shown their art in Paris because it wasn't considered art. The argument was it's not art. It's a bunch of squashed paint, and it's landscape. It's not art. Art has to be well-defined. Neoclassicism was in. This stuff is crap. Well, within a few years, that was Impressionism, and it became the hit. And all art scored was defined on that. Art is something that's new, it's never been done before, and it challenges you. Yeah. So this argument that Scorsese brings up saying this isn't film, it's nothing new to say that. But yeah. the second piece is, is he has some type of definition that the film must fall under, and this falls outside of that category. Well, certainly by that means Suburban Sasquatch and other films I did aren't film. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say he's wrong there if that would be the case. But <laughs> the other side of it, too, so you can easily argue that it's a film, but the other side of this, too, is I don't care who you talk to, I mean, with the exception of me maybe here, is that films are made to make money. Mm -hmm. So then the next question is, are the Marvel movies, are they making money? (laughs) I think we have a little bit bit of money. (laughs) Well, there you go, right? A little more than breaking even. A little bit of bank. (laughs) I I will listen to a music album because sometimes they make me laugh. Sometimes they're strong and powerful emotions. Sometimes I meditate. I will go see a movie for the same reasons. Maybe not meditation. The point is, is that I, I have a variety of emotional needs that I go for these entertainment pieces. Same thing with art gallery. Uh, I will go look at something yes. from a pre-Renaissance area with a certain mindset. I don't expect to come out, at, come out of it saying, gee, I never thought I would see melting clocks before. You wouldn't say that. It just wouldn't be expected. You have to go into seeing a movie saying, I'm expecting to see a film. So it's black and white with subtitles. And oh my gosh, I have to interpret this. I don't mind seeing Chris Hemsworth beat the crap out of somebody with a hammer. That's yeah. kind of cool. That's, that, that's, I paid money to see admission for it. So if you don't want to call it a film, that's fine by you. But it's a moving picture, so it's a film by my definition. So my follow-up question would be, Marvel has an open checkbook for you. What 
superhero group or premise would you say that one's mine? Here's where I would have a challenge in this answer. Or DC. A little bit of a caveat. They, in my opinion, they've done such an amazing job building, building this universe or technically universes that they have to be both cautious and bold at the same time. Cautious because they can't cause a disruption, mm -hmm. which goes against the past, but bold because they know at some point they have to bring something new into the formula. Yeah. My problem is, is even though I've been a Marvel fan for years, pretty much I've seen the heroes I love on screen. So I don't know that I would bring anything else. I'm so endeared with Spider-Man. I don't know that I could successfully direct a Spider-Man movie. News today, every day I'd be peeing out of excitement on the set every day, like, he has to make a new Spider-Man movie. <laughs> I'd, I'd probably put the costume on, too, but that's another story. <laughs> Why is this costume ripped? Well, it was made for Tom Holland, but I wanted to try it out, see how I <laughs> see if I fit. Tom's got nothing on me, baby. Oh, come on. <laughs> Show up to direct the film the first day, dressed as Spider-Man. I got it from Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> they would love that. I know I'm, it's got I'm a string the holding your mask on, but... I mean, I would love to do Spider-Man because I love the character. Mm -hmm. I've read so many comics to really get a feel for the character, but yeah. I think there's something that really stuck with me, just going back to Thor, that um, Kenneth Branagh brought out. I can actually see Dave this. doing a Venom movie, just saying. Uh, uh -huh. yeah. Call Space I babe, would love man. to, but see, I was very much in when Venom was like this... Uh, 80%, 90% mean and angry and yeah. a little bit of the quirky, odd humor. I know it translates well to film and they're making money off that, but I was with the first Venom comics from the late 80s on through the you know late yeah. 90s. But that's so where we have you come different. in with a Venom yeah. movie and you make it darker with a lot yeah. more of the undertones of the comic of that original Venom because Venom was like, he was a problem for Spider-Man. Like, yeah. he was almost like... A making of Spider-Man because the Sp uh, the Venom symbiote remembered his time with Spider-Man. Like, man, we had something. The tension that was brought <laughs> in when he would change from Venom to a service man, talking to you know uh, Aunt May or something. You you just felt this tension come off the page. You're like, what is he actually going to do? You really want to see what happened next? Yeah. Now everything's out in the light. There's less mystery and there's no connection with Spider-Man. Makes it a bit of a challenge, but. Again, you, so the Kathleen Kennedy issue, right? Sony has to watch what they say mm -hmm. and do. There's very strict guidelines on how the characters approach their box within. I think a lot of people and fans say, oh, I want to see this, that, and the other. They say, you don't understand. Corporations can't allow that. There's legal requirements from all of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know how we got yeah. here, but that's the way it is. So I feel like I'm just happy to see the characters that we do see because it's amazing to get them to that stage. Because even once everything's done and written, the director can come in and be like, no way, I'm not doing this or I'm not doing that. Or a producer changes the lighting or changes something in one scene. Everything's changed. Yeah. There's a lot of hands involved that people don't see. But And that's one, re yeah, that's one reason why when I make my films, as many offers as I've had for buyouts, sequels, production, other people directing, no, I'll do it myself. I don't care if it succeeds or fails. I just, I just don't want somebody coming in here and saying, well, this is how I see the scene and no, I, I want to go to my vision. If it's wrong or right, it doesn't matter to me. I just want to see what it turns out to be. You know, And if yeah. you want to elicit feedback and you want to be part of the writing process, great. But it's got to stay true to some sense. And if we go your way that or my way, I don't care about that. But it has to be coherent and set up initially, and it's not off the fly. And your reasons have to be well understood. So our first point, talk about comedy. If, you, if you're paying to come to a comedy club, you understand the reasons you're there. You may get insulted. You're, it's intended to entertain make you laugh. If you're going to be on the film, you can't say you're a producer just to throw stuff willy-nilly. You have to be part of the process to build you to get to that point. Yeah. That's a very good, a lot of very good points. Now, one point you did make was, of course, that there was a process, a written process. And one thing that Disney has done right is this next story. And, of course... That was a good segue. Thank you, Connor. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay parental consent um but we start off our podcast normally scheduled program since we're in the realm of nerdy and off of the heavy hit you with a you know 15 pound dumbbell uh we have the bid bitch 
Season of two, course. I guess. Season, season two, two coming out fall 2022, man. We have Disney is doing something right with this because the trailer shows us more of Clone Force 99's antics and a deadlier threat from the Empire in this trailer. And I can't wait. I saw Bad Batch co- pop up in the final season of the Clone Wars, and I got excited. And then I found out, well, you know, Dave Filoni kind of tossed it out there. Then I got more excited because that's how we got Ahsoka Tano. And then I saw Obi-Wan, and I got excited because we saw, Tam- uh, what is his name, Tamara Morrison? Yeah, Tamara Morrison, yeah. We saw yep. him as a veteran clone trooper begging for change. How awesome was that? <laughs> yeah, it was just a nice little nod, man. That was awesome. You're looking at I his mean, helmet and, and like, which one were you? Hold on, I know you. I know you and You, then, you um, all think you look the same, but which one are you? You well, and McGregor's you daughter was it also, in, also in uh, episode two. So, so what's the verdict on Obi-Wan? What did you guys think? Loved it. Oh, I'm going to watch it again. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't already? Noob. But I watched it twice already. <laughs> yeah, I watched it twice too. Phenomenal. <sighs> I think so it was good. love. And by the way, sorry to jump jump topic here, but so you're showing a teaser. Did you see the teaser for Andor? Yes, I believe I that's in here somewhere. Oh, um, don't spoil it. Don't show them. I thought it was a phenomenal teaser. I, I can't oh. believe how much I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, next no. Last. Andor is it is the next story? Next to last. Oh, next to last. Oh wow. And really, speaking of which, really I, 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 I probably should get a kickback for this, make a plug for them, but th- there is a, <laughs> a virtual reality game. I know it's in Vegas. I did it in Vegas where uh, it's a Star Wars virtual reality game. Have either of you heard of this? It's called The Void, V-O-I-D. No. no. Let me look it up. Okay. Uh, you absolutely must do Big this. Big Brother, pull that up on the main, re- main viewer. Don't read reviews. Don't spoil yourself. Just go do it. Uh, it was so well done. And I did it in 2018. So, so the text probably improved a little bit. Star Wars The Void VR. Is that coming back? Yeah. So if you, if you just type The Void, it's probably going to pull up a lot of stuff. It comes up too around here. Oh, there we go. Story Don't click director. on images if you Google The Void because then you might see me. But, I mean, you won't see my face, so certain. And just mentioning <laughs> The Void, right. David Wiscavage. Like, what are they trying to say here? <laughs> Loading. Dark I think they missed the mark. <laughs> a bit. A bit. <laughs> Wait, did you say this is a PG podcast? I'm sorry. I'm, I just go backwards. What? What can I say? Uh, you can say whatever you want. But oh, guests great. can say whatever they want. It could be the gaping void. Not sure. Anyway, yeah, so <laughs> no, Obi Wan I thought was phenomenal. I love the characters. I mean, I, 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 it's really enthralling. I can't wait to see where they go. And I, I do have to hand it up. I think that Ewan McGregor is uh, oh. Ewan, Ewan. Ewan. I think Ewan. he's doing a phenomenal job. Oh Even the little God. girl, the little girl is playing Leah. I just loved her written line. I read online some people actually have a problem with young Leia, and I'm like, how could you, you heartless bastard? She <laughs> is adorable. Over anything I know. Well, there were people upset over the um, the lady who was one of the uh, Inquisitors, second sister. What why? Yeah. Third sister. Yeah. Third, Third sister, sister. Why? They're great. People, I don't know. <laughs> I don't understand that. But one thing I do understand is this next story because Star Wars Ahsoka has found its Sabine Wren. Do they have a picture of her down below? I I heard she was going to show up. Nah, of course I didn't. But (laughs) the latest addition to the show's cast is Natasha Liu uh, Bordozo from The Society who will play the Mandalorian Sabine Wren. Um, oh, wow, I actually forgot this first story, didn't I? Tales from the Jedi. Well, remember that uh, Ahsoka story for next. But Tales from <laughs> the Jedi. <laughs> We're a well-polished machine, if you can't tell, Dave. Um, there's, there's the picture. So of, uh, how, how about you tell us about Tales from the Jedi? The Secrets of the Empire. Yeah. That VR right there. Oh, okay, nice. With a generic Star Wars picture of, obviously, Vader's... You know, Mustaf- palace. Mustafar. Mustafar. Yeah, Mustafar. So that's that's an image I pulled from, from now. The Star Wars: The Void. VR. We may actually see Mustafar in Tales from the Jedi because the series will follow various Jedi from the prequel area, including Count Dooku, Qui Gon Jinn, and Ahsoka. Wow. Liam Neeson 
will be returning as Qui-Gon Jinn. Wait a minute, this is animated, right? Animated series? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, given the successor to the Clone Wars and the Rebels and all that and all the Visions and all the Star Wars animated series, this will be great because, one, you're getting Mace Windu. You can find out why he got his purple lightsaber because there's a lot of fan lore saying, well, that means, you know, you're kind of dark side, you're kind of light side, you're kind of... It gives you a chance to explain that. Count Dooku, it gives you a chance to explain his his fall. And Ahsoka, <laughs> we get to see as a child. And where we get to see that, hey, this is where Mr. P- Master Plow Coom picks her up and abducts her from her parents. <laughs> ah, good. Nothing like a good old parent abdu- uh, so, child abduction in the Jedi Order. So I know we talked about it previously, Matt, where one... Like the whole purple lightsaber is like the wielder of the lightsaber has been exposed to the dark side of the force, but he has come through it, which is why the blue lightsaber was bled and exposed, which is now, you know, which now makes it purple. Well, it makes Um, sense because you look at the Jedi Guardian, they have the yellow. Sentinel is blue, counselor is green. There, there is that uh, tradition in the Jedi Order of bringing people back from the dark side. That's how you get the High Republic era. And that's why Obi-Wan thought, up until he chopped his Padawan's arms off, that he could save him. Hmm. You know? Like, I still got this. Nope. So I have to ask Dave, how how awesome was Obi-Wan's expression when he found out that Anakin was still alive. Yeah, you could read it on his face. There's that shock. The moment of, like, distress. Dread. It was anguish. Just, all oh. in one. Now, now, not just to give him props, but look at the writing and the directing. Mm-hmm. The directing spot on. I mean, it's just focused and telling you, but look at the writing. It's what the writing basically says. Basically says, just like The Last Jedi, this guy's disconnected from the Force. He can have all these emotions because as a Jedi, you're not supposed to have emotions. So that mm-hmm. disconnect becomes made clear that the fact that he's expressing them. Now the question is, can he get back into the game? Yeah. What does he do? Does he get back in the game? Is he going to hiding again? I mean, it was it was clear that he was just overtaken by. What did you think, Chris? Oh, I. Th- oh, my God. Like, I I teared up when that scene happened, which is like looking just saw seeing the raw emotions because he went through you could see like the moment of him going through the seeing his friend the turning of his friend mm. him leaving him on mustafar thinking he was dead and then the epiphany of fear anguish hate and 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 like what am Suffering. i gonna do now like like his fear and like path, like even though that he knew he was not going to be going to the dark side himself, this is like now he has his own fear and his own and his own things that worried about will Luke now be turned? Because yeah. those are things that are built like are going through his head, isn't like and you because know. you get that one scene with him and uh, Uncle Owen in the beginning, <laughs> yep. and he's just like, oh, like you trained his father, and he has that realization moment where he's like. Ah, oh, no, nah, you got me. No, nah, you're right. And now, you're right. And now we have four or five episodes where he has to go through this. This, okay, I'm going to try to change him again. To, there is no way this man is redeemable. And then in a new hope, it's going to be Luke. Your father's lost. You're just going to have to kill him. I mean, that's how he was an empire. Yeah. Basically, says was it return? Your your father's already won. You know, the emperor's mm-hmm. already won because you know. It, and Luke's want to say no. I can try and redeem him. So he's going to have to go through some major changes coming up. Like yeah, like episode. like what you're saying. Like Empire. Like, I mean, Obi Wan was truly defeated. He was a Force ghost at that point. So like, yeah. yes, he was truly defeated. But like you could just hear it in Alec Guinness's voice. It's like his just utter defeat and that emotion, that emotional void of like. You what get, do we do now? You get that emotional tone from Alex Guinness, but the other thing you get is in return, when Vader is talking to Luke, he has a lot more insight as to how Obi-Wan felt about him turning into the dark side that they have never explained. 
And the nerds on the internet have pointed this out, and I 100% think that's where they're going. We're going to have this ultimate battle because he's going to have to save Leia. Vader already knew about Leia. Of course, sister. He already has that in his head. He's using that at the last moment. Back up a second. Are you... I thought they, you're. Are you saying Vader knew about Leia before Return of the Jedi? I think it's possible. No, I don't no. think so. No, I would just. I would disagree. Yeah, yeah here's why he. What if that was the case? Why wouldn't he make the case to go after her? Besides, he sounded very surprised. Mm, you know and what? I you're feel right. Like he sounded in Return of the and when Th- he. That's a hard walk back from Jedi to to, yeah, to that. And, and and Luke even realized he made a mistake by making an emotional connection to Leia that Vader picked up on. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Another. Thing it's only know. it's only through Je- it's only in Return of the Jedi that Vader searched his feelings to p- pick up on Leia. Well, that was because yeah. Luke kept hounding him with the light side, and he kept hounding Luke with the dark side. So there was a little bit of a bleed there in between the worlds. So they both in that scene, you cut both see them like. And part of that search scene your was feelings. Luke trying to. Luke trying to retain his light side to find things that make him stay, you know, on Leia. that side of light. Isn't this, isn't this amazing? You're talking about films and books and a TV series that so many people can analyze and look at it from a different perspective. And and that's the wonderful thing about the way this mythology is set up. You can analyze endlessly, still not come to a conclusion, but to hear different perspectives. Oh, I hadn't thought about that and have such an interesting dialogue about it. I mean, long after this film has been created, put in the can, shown in theaters and whatnot, now you're still wondering, well, what does it actually mean? Even though you're bringing new items to light, mm-hmm. you're not contradicting the old, but you're still bringing out new possibilities, new ways to analyze certain pieces. Of the art. I think it's phenomenal. I think it's wonderful. It is, but that's also what we call a safe bet in my book because that's what the podcast is based off of. A whole bunch of stuff we can just endlessly talk about forever about. Like this next story, which is the Ahsoka story. I... Uh, already led to no no no. this is the first time we're seeing it right right because i edited that out yeah. well now i have to keep <laughs> it in because it's a joke oh okay <sighs> i trapped myself but you saved yourself work the, la- <laughs> <laughs> the latest addition to the show's cast is natasha lou bardozo from the society who will play the Mandalorian Sabine Wren in the series. And this, I would assume, is where we're going to see how she loses the Darksaber uh, to Giancarlo Esposito. If I had to guess. What are your thoughts? Yeah, that sounds like a given. I think there's also probably going to be some backstory maybe with Ezra Mm. Bridges, right? I would imagine that there's going to be some connectivity there. Oh, this is great because Rosario Dawson, she came out, scroll down a little bit. She came out on um, the uh, the stage at the Star Wars celebration with Chopper. Oh, look at that. It's great, right? Like, we're getting the Rebels, man. And obviously not Kanan because he's dead. And um, So he's not going to be on then? No, no. But <laughs> uh, did Zeb die? They didn't say Zeb. They said Chomper. You're gonna get Hera. You're gonna get Sabine remember. Wren. He went off to uh, what was his people called? In that special land, land of Magicville, wherever they're from. Avatar. No, the uh, the. Uh, oh, what, their, what their, their planet. Yeah, their planet called. Uh, it was hidden in the Nova or other dimension. Was he was like a that. Zebnoid or something? Yeah, Zebnoid. He went back to Zebnoid. Zebulon, sir. He's blue. It's a Smurf planet. There we go. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Gargamel, you got to watch out for him. He's a bitch. But the casting is perfect for this. Um, I love Rosaria Dawson as Ahsoka. Yeah. And I loved her in everything we've seen her up until this point, from Night Nurse to Ahsoka to, you know, everything she's done, clerks and all. She's just one of those actresses. I will, if you have her in it, I will watch it. She so could be dressed as the about- suburban sca- Sasquatch. I am watching that remake. Uh, seeing her interviewed about being in the role, it's so cute. She's so happy about it. And she kicked ass in her premiere in The Mandalorian. I think it was episode six of season two. Do you see her Except geeking out was, when she was on favor. stage with Mark Hamill? She was like, yeah. She was like, couldn't believe it. Yeah, the pics are, that's, so, that's so cute. That's adorable. Because you know they sprung it on her. And she's just like, all right, you know, you're going to be here with Master Plo Koon. That's not Plo Koon! <laughs> <laughs> But I love that, man. It's just this. They have the right formula going on right now to where I really trust in Filoni. 
them making yeah. him the head of creative, uh, you know, the creative choices there is the best choice they could have because he was practically George Lucas's Jedi apprentice. Yeah, well, hold on now. Uh, you got to get a prop to John Favreau also. Yes, absolutely. I mean, he's, 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 doing, he's been helming, you know, The Mandalorian. And uh, uh, honestly, props to the directors they brought in there. I'm glad that they didn't have, just didn't have John or – or, um, Robbie Rodriguez, any, any one Bryce Dallas like, Howard. Bryce Dallas Howard's done oh. a phenomenal job in her episodes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. She did the uh, the heiress, the one where the uh, I know this because I just rewatched them all this weekend. Yeah. Where it was on season season two, and they went on the Squid Planet. Yeah, that I one and her original Mark. one in like the backwater pa- planet where you uh, see uh, the villagers, Gina yeah. Carlo. Dude, those are some of my favorite episodes, man. They yeah, are amazing. Absolutely great. Even having um, Carl Weathers direct. I thought that was phenomenal. I think he did a great job. Yeah. The one where uh, Baby Yoda throws up. I'm, I, that was brilliant. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, that was great. It was great. I mean, you can't go wrong with vomit. But anyway, the whole episode was really good. I mean, all of them have been so well done. And I got to say this. Obviously, I've subscribed to Disney+. Plus. I will continue to do so. But I really want them to come out on Blu-ray. I want my copies in my house to always have. I really wish they'd put them out. Yeah. I won't drop Disney Plus if they if they do that, but I just wish I had my copies also. No, I side with you there. Uh, there's something about having that that you physical can always go to that physical copy that it's going to be hard to let go of. Of course, the new generation of uh, human meat sacks will probably just go digital. <laughs> there's a different way to go about it. A lot like this next story because. The new Star Wars series, Skeleton Crew, starring Jude Law, is coming into Disney+. Plus, and it also has director John Watts. So, John Watts stepping away from Marvel just to go do Star Wars. Because yeah. who could blame him? You know? It's, what's the premise about? Like, what, what's the era? Uh, it doesn't actually say. It's Classified. Skeleton Crew. New series is the same one director John Watts uh, revealed earlier this month. And Skeleton Crew will premiere sometime in 2023. Uh, it will focus on a group of kids around 10. I should have read the copy. Uh, from <laughs> a world. tiny little planet, in quotes, <laughs> who get lost in the Star Wars galaxy for the series will be about uh, their journey home. This is... What is that? What's that 90s show that was on uh, Nickelodeon? Star Trek Voyager? It, well, yeah, Voyager, but there was that one. What was it? Space Quest or something? Yeah, the Magic School so. Bus? It was like Space, Space Quest. Quest. It was on, Net, it was on Nickelodeon, and it was like not Star Trek, but they hopped Land into the a... Uh, well, yeah, there's a bunch of different premises. I just I remember Space Quest because it had Logan a guy Lundy. who wasn't a Klingon, and he was very sensitive to hear uh, to sounds. It was I amazing. love Lucy. Sure. <laughs> stop me when I'm right. I want to say it was Space me. Quest. But it's a very kind of familiar premise to where you have a bunch of 10-year-olds unsupervised in a spaceship because, of course, that would happen. If you don't believe me, ask any one of your friends – who is a parent if they have ever forgotten their child at the grocery store? I've so worked there. Ever it happens your child often. At the grocery store? No. Oh, I've no I've, I've seen okay. it frequently. But the point is, is there's a a good niche market that they're going for with the kids. They also have uh the High Republic series that's coming out to where it's Jedi Padawans being trained, and that's the premise of their animated show. There's a lot of different stuff that they're coming out with. A lot of A plus ideas. I think it's great. They have a platform with Disney Plus. They have a lot of subscribers. They know they have a built in audience. It's so much easier to cancel or stop a show than it is to stop production on a film. Mm-hmm. So why not go this route? See how this pans out, and then wait for some conceptualized three series movie uh, set to do again. When you know they, when people have gone through enough time where they get the. You know, I'll say it's a sequel, bad taste out of a lot of people's mouths, I yeah. guess. I'm not putting them down myself. I'm saying there seems to be so much discourse about it. It's probably safe for them to move away from it and take their time on it. Well, absolutely. But the main thing that I've seen with these Star Wars uh, premise that they have released is that everything that they're doing, they're not only going the live action route, but they're also still pulling a focus to the animated market and anime because they were also doing yeah. another season of visions they're focusing on hey 
what can we do creatively in this market? Because people will watch it. I think with anime being a lot more popular now, people put more stock into that as a medium for their idea. Especially now, like more than more than ever, the most recent uh, convention I was at was very anime heavy. Um, um, but as you saw with like the pictures I sent you with the, with the cars, they were all yeah. decked out in anime. Oh yeah, um, it, and the uh, the voice panel was all primarily anime with you know with uh, you know one person from Star Trek DS Nine. Man, um, I would never. I'd feel so bad because I would never remember like their names or all the characters because those voice actors do a bunch of characters. Uh, Alexis Tipton, she did the voice of Trunks, uh, young Trunks in uh, Dragon Ball. So she, that was she, that's very her. popular in anim- animation. Yeah. to have a woman do <coughs> a young man or adolescent boy's voice. It sounds so similar. Yes. Yeah. It's well, I mean, it's easy. It's like, you know, Nancy Cartwright does Bart Simpson. She's been doing Bart Simpson since the inception of The Simpsons. And she yeah, will be in Tony Six packs of cigarettes a day, she's damn well better. <laughs> <laughs> These anime, sh- like uh, my I, my daughter and I went to a couple of anime conventions and she cosplayed. And I'm like, I'm like, are, is anybody going to know this character? She's like, it's from a video game. And I can't tell you how many people stop there. It's like, oh, I love your cosplay. Like, oh, yeah. Like it is, it's not just movies, like it spans so much media and it's gotten such a huge fan base. I know when I was buying anime in the early 90s, you couldn't find it, you had to go to very esoteric places. You go to a convention, and mm-hmm. like only one or two guys had anime, it was very hard to get what you wanted, you know. And now it's like back it's, it's, in the it's, 70s before it was anime, it was like Star yeah. Blaze, like wow, this is great. One of my favorite, <laughs> older, I will say, anime is Cowboy Bebop. I watched that religiously at least once a year older exactly how <laughs> exactly the reaction i thought i'd get it's like 90s it's not that far older is that older yeah that was different like see that comes out that's anime but it was a skew from what you typically see with like huge battling robots you know and it was die, more you know. star wars Gundam Voltron. Yeah. That, it was very yeah, star wars Smack very off, yeah. it was like star wars mixed with jazz and a western <laughs> You know, yep, yep, exactly. a lot like Trigun. Trigun was very Western. You know, there was yep. a lot of really Western animes in the 90s. And then you had Pirates, which One Piece is still going. That's why you, you always have to continue to expand, you know, try new challenging different areas, which is what to bring it back to Star Wars Visions. I think it's a great idea for them to do to see what happens, because there might be fans that are crossing between two medium and, and see how it likes. And and there's nothing wrong with that, right? You'll they'll know they'll they'll get enough feedback. They know whether yeah. to continue to try more or try something different. But kudos to them. And as a fan of, of both media, I love seeing something new that challenges me. Absolutely, it's none yeah. other than an A plus idea. A lot like our ad segment, because A plus catering and events. Whether you are an up and coming indie film developer, a seasoned veteran or just a guy who wants to have good food at his office party you're going to want to hop over to apluscaterers.com where you're going to click on that portfolio and start salivating because they think up the most delicious delicatessens that are going to please everybody and that is not an individual id iv drip that is an individual serving of sauce as big brother has pointed out to me they're not in Injecting the sauce into the center, you're supposed to pull it out and squirt it on your individual serving. <laughs> wow. It's not an yeah. IV. I thought it was like slowly it. marinating the the waffles, but that's that's not the case at all. I'm sorry, can someone? Can so I hate to ruin your ad. No one told me to re-advertise it. First of all, can you slowly <laughs> repeat that in a very sultry voice, explaining how you would yank that? oblong object out and squirt it everywhere i just like to can you go no, to the i think again? we're we're a pg show now and i'm not allowed yeah. to say things like we have a anymore. we we have a limit on big brother yeah, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not allowed to talk like that you see when i talk like that chris cries and we had to cancel the show i do cry and th- and that's when bit. and I, you know and 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 about seven million of my cells die inside of me and I'm that's when hey, look inside. tacos that's when the devil gains its wings <laughs> which is why you want to get those devilish tacos as well as all of the things that they don't have on the website yet but they ha- they're doing events constantly and they're constantly innovating and creating a lot like this next story which dave already mentioned it 
but we're going to talk about it now because Andor's first trailer Can is... Can I go back and talk oh, about some of the things you just showed? Like, I'm really trying to keep myself from saying something. Nah, you're fine. <laughs> well, I'm the one that goes everywhere. I got some funny comments to make. You go ahead and make your comments, Dave. Go ahead. Go you ahead. showed the squirty cucumber, and then you're talking about pulling things out there and spraying them all over the place. I mean, yeah. what's a guy to think? You understand my di- my podcastly plight, okay? You understand. There's a lot of we- jokes rattling up around here. We're spirit well, animals. I thought, well, I thought we weren't woke. Am I allowed to? What am I allowed to see? I, I'm going to joke until you tell me to stop. Someone's got to mute me. We'll just bleep it out if it's inappropriate. That's way too much work. <laughs> you can say oh, whatever really? you want, Dave. You're the guest. Bleeping out oh. is way too much work. We're just going to let you say what you want. Yeah. Man, I was really going to go say to whatever town. you want, Dave. You're the guest. Yeah. Really? Is this, this isn't live, so I can say whatever I want? It is, no, this live. is live. Well, it's we're, live, we're but live. you can still say what you want. Live to Mark and three other people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a small market. It's a small market. Mark says he was good. left at the zoo. Niche market, I'll be needless to say. I'll let the whole cream squirty in the waffle go, and the, your taco's getting the cream put all over. That's fine. Put the hot dog in there, whatever. So uh, how about Andor? Andor has a new trail. That hang on, man. That deserves this. <laughs> I was blown away by this trailer. I, I am so excited about the show. Full screen that big brother because it, it deserves it. It won't. It won't. It won't? Oh, that's this is, this little is, trap. They don't like that. It's a trap. They want you to see this advertisement here under the P J A N D W H dot com. Well, that's because they're ringing a bell. Ringing a bell. Right. Uh, this is Star Wars something? What? What is this? Andor. So, if I remember the timeline right, this is after Kenobi, obviously before Rogue One. Um, we're following Andor. And they are very alarmed because they have a bunch of troopers about to be at their front door. And those little met- metal platelets, I love that. How it's like the shop owner, like, time to go! And they just drop yeah. down. The, the sets they did were phenomenal. I mean, they really did a great job bringing this real world feel here. It's just with them, you don't know what's on the volume and what they actually spent money to build on a soundstage. Well, now they built these sets. They started these in 2018, I think, 2017, before the volume became fully usable. Mm. So some of this might be now volume, but some of the village, I think, was uh, was originally designed and built. I saw some uh, out of LG Studios, some pictures of it was being built but yeah now i mean you don't even need to now that the quality is so good with that volume it's just what they did with the volume in mandalorian to where the x-wing they were literally shipping to galaxy's edge they're like hang on can we borrow that we, just, we didn't we just <laughs> need it for a little bit yeah right <laughs> and they just borrowed it and they used it for the show like yeah. little things like that it's just like you don't know what you're really going to get into with Andor. A lot like we don't know what we're getting into with Obi-Wan because everybody's watched these first two episodes because it's the biggest premiere in Disney launch history, which is not long. Yeah. But out of all their original content, this one sh- shot through the roof. So that's really what's impressive. And Andor, at first when they announced it, I'm like, oh, okay, Andor. After rewatching Rogue One, no, I'm down for an Andor series. How do you guys feel? I agree. I was hoping they'd have, and I was thinking, well, it's probably just going to be Andor and the droid in their first adventure is going from planet to planet. And I'm like, oh, well, I'll still see, still see it in Disney. That's why I was really blown away by the teaser. I'm like, the scopes changed. They got Mon Mothma in there. They're talking about the intrigue moving from the Senate. They're broadening. They have, um, what's his name, from Thor and the Avengers in there, like, Okay, they're really trying to bring in some talent. I, I, I hate to die. I forget it. The, the well, here's the thing, Star man. Carter. Mon Mothma. In any of the extended universe with Star Wars, you didn't see her until after Return of the Jedi. So this is setting her up as a political figure beforehand. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, she had some stuff in, like, from, I think, Clone Wars. There was a deleted scene in uh, Revenge of the Sith where she was uh, with Padme and they were trying to discuss with Palpatine. Yep. Like, yeah. You know, we have to have some dissent. But this is mainstream. You have yeah, Mon yeah, no, Mothma. It's, it's, it's great. It's connecting points, but I'm excited for it. Like, but you know what? I just like, like you just said, like Obi-Wan just dropped. So, like, I'm so psyched over that. Like, I can't even get to this. And then Mandalorian season three is next 
year or late this year? I 2023 think? is February. Mando yeah, season it. three and Ahsoka. Yeah, see, it's just so much to get excited over. Exactly. There she is. And then we also, what I kind of hope they would just kind of slip in there is like maybe a little solo reference, even if it's like the Millennium Falcon, like flying off in a corner when you're in a space dock. Yep. Give me a little Easter egg like that. Or the ghost flying off. All I want, a, lo- a ship. Yep. Give me a ship and I will be happy with this entire or, series. Or if this podcast is popular enough, which I'm sure maybe more than six people will hear it, <laughs> Kathleen Kennedy, please call me because I'm ready to direct Darth Maul. I'm yeah. ready for that. Oh, his 100%. Entire history and then his end, like, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. Tell me when you want me to come in. <laughs> Man, Dave, could, I'm here to help. You could have a really good We're all here. Well, you could have a really good narrative because you could you have, have him both getting stronger and darker in the force <laughs> when he's in that junk planet to where he's losing his mind, but he's also <laughs> seeing premonitions of his future and visions of his past to where you can truly really see the deep, loss yeah, I mean, of I his completely agree psyche. With you because when I read the uh, what was it, Darth Plagueis, that book? Yeah. It, mm-hmm. I think it's Darth Plagueis. Yeah, if you read that book, um you really get an idea of where he came from and playing the video games and then how he was manipulated and how he ends up adjust. It's going to drive anybody insane. Plus, he was a really powerful user, a force user. Like, it would be a really cool story. Call mm-hmm. me, Kathleen. It's like the I, dark I, I, side of the force has, like, that master in the dark side of the force is like your agent in Hollywood. Like, nah, baby, you're fine. You're great. You're great. Fuck you. I'm dumping you for somebody else. And then that's it. Like, <laughs> Nah, man, you're on a trash planet. I I got this new guy. I'm coming. Dar, you know, yeah. Count Dooku. He's he's got potential. But I also got another guy on the side. Um, Anakin. So, I've been coming. So him Dave, for years. I have a I have a running theory with Count Dooku. Well played by Christopher Lee. Yes. Yeah, All great. right. Um, but I think Count Dooku was not fully embedded into being a a Sith only because he he understood how to draw from the dark side of the force but in the grand scheme of things he knew he did, didn't want to be a pawn I feel like he had and, an over in, uh, inflated ego to where he thought he was more dark side than he was I think he had a different end game I think he was trying to eventually be the one to overthrow Sidious and end the war. That's not a. Oh, I see where you're going. I, you think I, he's going I the back, with, the back door, giggity? I would agree ninety percent, and here's why. I think that you're a hundred percent correct. There's full on-screen evidence as to Lucas wanting that to be the case. Not that I've ever known him state that, but it's clear that's what he intended. Whether he intended him to come back as a Jedi, I don't know that he indicated that. I think. The play was he was going to try and manipulate the scenario that suited him best. And no one in the audience could tell what that was going to be. And here's your evidence. Lucas said himself that the history of the films rhymes. So when we're first introduced to Dooku, it has to rhyme with something from the second film of the original series, which is Empire Strikes Back. And who does that echo with? I'll give you a few seconds. You're wrong. Did you get it? No. No. Lando Calrissian. Mm. Yeah, no, now that you say it, that makes complete sense. Right, here's why. Now, I'm not going to have to back it up with any theory. Lucas is and has always been a visual director. Yes. So when you see Lando Calrissian, what's he wearing? The cape. And now when you see always. Dooku, what's he wearing? The cape <laughs> and the clasp are almost identically the same. <laughs> he's always wearing a cape. Or he's always wearing a cape. He has a bed cape. No, in um, a clasp. What was it? The the sequel oh, okay. trilogy movie. He's wearing like a, a full on robe in a desert. So he's a masochist. But he's Hold on. In, in in Jedi, he's wearing Han's clothes. Yeah. Well, no, 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 no. He's not even no, cold no, no, no. yet, and he's got Hear his clothes me out. Hear me out. All right, no, think he about, does have Think about clothes. his behaviors. You, you have a character who has an unknown motivation that seemingly seems to switch and tell the truth, but he's a liar, and he's trying to kill somebody. Look at exactly what Lando Carissian did. What was his endgame? Why was he switching sides? He was looking out for himself. I think, honestly, when he was saying that to Obi-Wan, I think he truly believes that he can convince Obi-Wan not to join the Sith, but to defeat the Emperor 
and at least at some point make some decision about what he wants to do next. I don't know that he necessarily wanted to rule, but I think he wanted to change the game. Right. He wanted to control the narrative. As yeah. a side note, and um, uh, and uh, the only reason why I didn't think I didn't think he went full Sith is because every every apprentice that Darth Sidious Emperor Palpatine had eventually had the yellow glowing eyes. Maul, um, mm-hmm. Maul, Anakin, well, because we Maul, see it a little bit. It was a little um, yellow, but his main iris was like black and red. Yeah, he was. Deep right, but that had that—that that that was that. just his species, as you see from like uh, where's Dothmir well, and like think Dooku of was more cerebral, so he didn't he didn't pull from the hate side of the force, mm, which yeah. pulls that yellow arc in the in the in the pupils. So well, that's it goes my, to David's that's my point. Process. It goes to David's point is to where yes, we see that with every other Sith, even going off of this into the extended universe, we see. When you go Sith, your eyes change. Like, very, very apparently. Correct. You won't be like, hey, Gary, I can't notice, but help your eyes look piss yellow. It's And then Gary's dead, because that guy's a Sith, and that's what they do. Well, yeah, I mean, and no. then his eyes are that much closer to red. Like, it never works out for a Sith, besides uh, Jedi, uh, uh, Jedi Padawan Shakira Shakira on Matt Plays every Saturday and Sunday as old man is scrolling uh, in the ticker below him. Um, wait, 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 hang up. What do you mean it never works out for the Sith? I could argue that. Well, as in... Because they're look, always angry. Palpatine is the there exception, okay, because... He has found a way to <clears throat> screw over his underlings as to where normally with the Sith, if you look at the expanded universe, it's, I'm going to teach you everything I know, and we are going to be a dominant power in the galaxy. What are you doing? And then they yes, die. That's the rule, too. <laughs> right. And then that's more. also where I would love to see more expansion in this High Republic era of where Sith get crazy and real. Oh, yeah, I, wait Sith a minute. No, you. That, they're doing it for <laughs> the Acolyte. Sith the, gone the wild title of the podcast. Is exactly that. It's in the High Republic, and I think it's going to lead up to the prequel series, which I loved, mm-hmm. by the way. I thought they were phenomenal. I love the prequel series. Yeah. Even when I – look, I was their target market when they came out. And, you know, my parents took us to when they were um, re-released in the high-definition version. With all the extra oh, cuts and everything, and what, are you I five loved years it. Old? Wow, middle school. So I was still in that range of Close. like. No, no. The, when he said prequel, it means like episode one, two, three. Yeah. The original trilogy is four, five, six. Yeah. 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 No, but I, yeah, I remember the original. The You're referring to the original trilogy. The yeah, high the definition the version yeah. also came out. I want to say either before, or after. I, it was probably the after the uh, the prequels, right? 97, 97 what 97 yeah. was the original trilogy re- re-releases. When did the prequels come out? 99, 99. was Phantom Menace was same with no same year as the Matrix. Really? Okay, so yeah, that it was re-release inspired those prequels. George well, kept watching his yeah. old stuff and he's like, <laughs> "You know what? I don't have to keep tooling around with this old stuff. I can actually make some new stuff." Old stuff. <laughs> I take offense oh, to that. Oh, you weren't there, referring there. to us. Okay. Yeah, he's referring to us there, dude. No, just George Lucas because we'll band together. <laughs> he's you. about to be mummified any minute. Um, but just like this next story, it really is because there's somebody in the Bacta tank that we don't know. Um, there's a lot of speculation on, but not sure if you have delved into this version of the Star Wars nerdy verse. But Star Wars. Jedi Survivor is the sequel to The Fallen Order. I haven't I'm actually completed I'm, I'm the story. I'm finished the game. I'm going through my first viewing of the story of Fallen Order uh, because I saw this and I was like, I, I can't believe I haven't beat it. So I'm going through on story mode, easy man mode, because I got way too pissed off on any other level. Yeah, oh my gosh, from the first sister, not the first time, but the larger sister yeah, that I, man. I played. Oh, she was so tough. I knocked that all the way down right there. I was like, give me the story, nothing else. And <laughs> even then, I was like, look, 
You got to have the right frame of mind when you go against the uh, third sister. You can't, you can't be angry. You got to be in a good mood. Be nice. Yeah. Meditate before. Me- meditation is probably necessary when you're playing the Jedi game. You got to think about these things if you want to complete this game. I'm not that Dark Souls game kind of fan, but yeah, yeah. it's Star Wars, and I want the story. So I'm going it's to masochist my way masochist. through it. Because look, you, you see the Bacta tank here, and a lot of fans are speculating that that is Star Killer. Oh, that'd be so awesome! I it would be too. great if it's. Oh, that would be amazing. And boy, is his hair grown. Well, you know, Bacta tank man, he's probably it's like 20. in some kind of a coma state in the Bacta tank, so he could try to grow his cells back. What is little left? Whatever. There's robotics for everything else. It worked out Force for Ming-Na Wei. was a great game, too. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Force Unleashed was the first game that made you feel like a Billy Badass as a, a Force user. And it yep. took what you had from uh, Jedi Knights, Jedi Academy, with you have light and dark side, and you can expand your powers how you feel. And then this game, Fallen Order, just kind of expanded even on top of that. And that's what was really great about it is that it just hit all those notes. So with this new game, I mean, going off of this with Survivor, I mean, do you see them doing a? Do you see them doing like a actual survival style game, or this is just going to be Star Wars, baby? And he I is just the think last they survivor. Just stay with the vein of you know, keep it a story, so it can kind of flesh out that lore. People are saying it's going to be darker, which I'm fine with. I don't mind it being darker. Just you know, connect the stories to 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 the lore that you're presenting on the on the Disney Plus series as well. If they would continue to go to, yes, the Disney Plus series and all the stuff there, but if in this game they connect to, like, Andor or, like, that rebel resistance. Yeah, just have a little nod to it. You don't have to, like, physically you well, know, then have. Well, then in the third game you can just have him sacrifice himself at the end like Starkiller did in the end of the first. Yeah, spoiler alert. And then, like, Tenshu. You've had enough time to play it. Yeah, you had You've had your chance. Well, and then, like, Tenshu, you're wondering how they're going to make more games, but they seemingly just pop them out of nowhere like popcorn. Jelly beans here. Everything above and in between are in your, in between the cushions of your van seat. Mm. Yeah, you make it sound so good. Yeah, no, I just dosed a little bit of reality to where I guarantee if I go into your van, your the, the cushions in between where your children sit in that van seat, I will find jelly beans or popcorn. You want to take that back? And maybe some old chicken. <laughs> no, I'm not touching the chicken. Th- you know what? That might actually be the title way. of the podcast. But we try to end off this podcast every single way, uh, week the same way, Dave, with what I call – a thought experiment. And it's taking a an idea and inserting yourself into it, Giggity. Today's is what role would you want and what role would you get in the Star Wars universe? Are you a Sith? Jedi? Bounty hunter? Mechanic? Accountant? Politician? Uh-huh. Where do you see yourself and what would you logically actually get? All right, so I, I would absolutely think that I could do a, a Qui-Gon type of Jedi from the perspective of being very uh, meditative, calm, uh, esoteric, and, and in terms of being able to provide a very balanced perspective, and I think I could sell that well. But man, who wouldn't love to do some scenery chewing, evil, just manipulative, subtle, not over the top, just would love to do that. Like, I just love, like, you know, not only Darth Sidious, but Palpatine, just when he was a politician, just, it's just so deliciously just evil. Just being the puppet master? Yeah, I, I would love, I would love both of those, but I think I would be cast to that, but realistically, I'd be lucky if I can get to be, like, the broom boy closet, like, just making all the broom <laughs> closet. <laughs> I, I, was, I was about to say the same thing. I would be lucky to just be so force sensitive enough to make something fall on someone's head. That's it. <laughs> That's awful morbid, but That's okay. 
Maybe well, no, just like in a clown jester kind of way. And just maybe like, better hey, for like a bounty hunt. hunter, but okay. <laughs> um, now, obviously, I think realistically, we all, all mm, sane, logical, good people, would rather like to think ourselves Jedi, but naturally we would go Sith to where myself, yes, idealistically, I would like to be a gray Jedi. A guy who started off with the Jedi Order and then was like, guys, we got to go our separate ways. And then just living up my life using the Force, not manipulating it in the dark side way, but even, all right, I can't use the Force in, like for attacking. I don't attack people in my day-to-day life, but you know what would be really helpful? Using the Force to grab me another beer. <laughs> <laughs> I would be selfish in that way. Maybe I no, levitate myself up to bed, and I don't have to walk up those steps. <laughs> don't think I wouldn't be doing it. Are you kidding me? I would live it up. You know what? That is exactly why I wouldn't get that, and I'd probably be a merchant. Well, what are you talking about? That hyperdrive's top of the line. Fresh day, down. Nothing less than 500,000 credits. I'd buy one from you. All of a sudden, I turn in on a floating fly. Um... <laughs> I'd buy that for a dollar. <laughs> Hang on, I have that one. Oh, oh, we are full of sound effects. I'd buy that for a dollar. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm not going to touch it. But, and then Ed 209 blasts you up. <laughs> but there's, old man, what would your, would you, I could see you as a politician. Let's pop, pop a spin I, on this I, uh, I, end I segment. I the politician. Where like, would you I, see other people in the podcast in the Star Wars universe? Because I would see you as the politician. Um, uh, it's Kelly okay. You can say I'm a, a Sith. Uh, a, a, a counselor. Oh, I thought like you were going to say would a would be con. like, All right. uh, kind of like, you know, how Palpatine has those guards and where he goes, leave us. And that would be Kelly. Oh, the dude with the horns? <laughs> the dude in the Senate right, with yeah, the horns? I don't mean to pin, pin, like peg you as like the just the a minion people that just stand tall and you know don't speak. But that's so you're Sarah, what you do. you're Emperor Palpatine. Kelly's your minion. Okay, I'm Emperor Palpatine without being evil. How about that? I don't think wow. that's possible that if you're a politician. It's a package deal, there, pal. <laughs> You can think you're not <laughs> evil. You can think I mean, that. Senator the was then you just label yourself a Democrat, and you're fine. But <laughs> I am neither Democrat or Republican. I am for the people. Sir. Big Brother, I have always seen as... Like Obi-Wan said, I am for the Republic. I am for democracy. I've seen Big Brother as, like, that Jedi who's in the library. You know, they're just watching over... The Jedi Library, they're reading all the holocrons, they're getting all the knowledge, they're categorizing. Yeah, but he would say the planet does ex- doesn't exist when the planet clearly exists. <laughs> That's because it's not in the records. You're going to have to file a complaint. <laughs> the paperwork is over there. Nice. Yeah. See? No complaints over there. He would he'd be happy right there. I mean, obviously before Anakin comes in and starts wong 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 right around your neck, but you know. Hopefully you still keep up on your lightsaber training. It was, it was a good thing till then. Yeah, yeah. It's like uh, my favorite place to uh uh vacation in the Star Wars universe before it blew up would be Alderaan. Oh yes. yeah, it looks beautiful. Because if you look in the old Republic MMO, they have, like, flying stingrays you use as, like, taxi cabs. Who wouldn't want to just hop on the back of a flying stingray? Just float around? Get the Starbucks in time? Nah, I'd go to Edu, 100%. I mean, if you're, like, a survivalist, I guess uh, the forest moon of Endor wouldn't be bad. You could pal around with Ewoks. You wouldn't really need to worry about it if you're a force sensitive user. You could just the force would protect you no matter what. Yeah, but that doesn't protect your stomach. And what do you do if you need a glass of wine? You know what? Uh, you have the force there, sir. You can crush your own grapes and make it turn to alcohol. You know Believe what? Believe me, my midichlorians will be working overtime making some delicious red mm, Pinot Noir. Yeah, Bordeaux. Mm. You just got to <laughs> think of all the different cuisine that would be an A plus idea on Coruscant. Much like your sponsor. Exactly. You can get the squirty stuff. You spray it all over the place. (laughs) 
I mean, then, you know, people cleaning up the restaurant probably won't like it. Just squirt it right on her face. Don't tell her. That's definitely hey, not going to go into the men's room. You know, there's probably just like the, the, you put the whole you, you, you squirt in it. So I don't know. You guys are the ones with the images and the waffles that it's all over the place. Yeah. I'm sorry. Mr. Johnson can't have the indo- individual su- uh, syrup servings. Why? He just squirts it all over the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> it's the wrong oh, slogan, boy. sir. Peter, who wrong cleans slogan. the bathrooms, he really doesn't appreciate it. He has to get the special solvent. It isn't kosher. (laughs) (laughs) Well, gentlemen, I think it's my time to leave the conversation. I hope I'm not leaving too early. Uh, It would be our time. We're actually getting. Oh, it is our time as well, because this is none other than a long drawn out goodbye. And we end off with the thank yous. We want to thank you to Mark Gervais. David was cabbage, man. Hey, man. Thank you so much for coming on. Flex Ruby, our Twitch streaming fan, Amanda Cariba, uh, Joe Gilmore, Becky Veluk, and you, loyal Walljanger. I have to say one final in. thing to all our Walljangers in May. Happy birthday. Absolutely. There are too many to goddamn name. Thank you. It would be a whole <laughs> other podcast to list yes, all the Walljangers and Purjangers that have a birthday yeah, in May. Myself, Big Brother. Everybody has a happy birthday. We love you. Amanda, Kevin, yeah. We love you. We miss you. We want to see you next week. Until then, game on, Wall Jangers! Bye-bye! Thank you. Play on my Jangers. That was a good segue. Our Island Kelly. Uh, Yeah, thanks for that. You didn't have to. You didn't have to say it's the end of May by doing that. That's... (laughs) in true Batman fashion. It's the last day of May. <laughs> I had to. I hope you understand. <laughs> Hence the reason why it's 3,000 degrees outside because, you know, you love your 3,000. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I thought it was because I was just comfortable with temperatures that, you know, resemble hell. There, there's, there's, you know, in in Philadelphia, in the Philadelphia area, mm-hmm. there's, there's uh, winter, which is now spring. Yeah. Spring, which is now summer. Yeah. And um, summer, summer, which, which is, is now hell. Summer too, <laughs> electric boogaloo. And then you know, and then Damn fall, the which is taint. the season known as the f- fall has turned into season known as construction. So. <laughs> yeah. I'm just. Just saying. Yeah. It's bad out there. It's pretty bad. So, <laughs> you can, n- nobody else is coming, Doodle. It's just neighbors, man. It's just the neighbors. Oh, paranoid guy. He got up out of the out of the video. He's obviously coming. Um, but yeah, nah, man. Um, I that was a funny joke. That I love. Um, you can go ahead and exit out of the f- Facebooks there, and then hop over to that first folder in the live stream. And then, uh, oh, yes, that's right. Oh, I didn't put that in there. I need to scroll back up. That I need to remember that. Um, so first in the live folder. Oh is not ads um but star wars knights of the old republic 2 is coming to switch sith lords are quite happy about that actually heading over june 8th and i was thinking about that man because the remake's coming it would it would be a good play on the switch the remake's coming and it would be a good play on the switch keeping that retro thing because you're not expecting anything really amazing graphically from a switch I mean, mean, OLED, maybe. It's its indie form, so... Yeah, it's very indie. Oh, yeah. That's what I love about Nintendo. They've gone really indie with it, and they just... They play to their audience, which is kids and older gamers. And if you have kids, you have that Switch there. They play to your niche, too, because you have, like, Zelda, you know? You can find Doom and a whole bunch of different third-party games on that Switch. So, it's... A nice game to have on there. They got a trailer. What's in the trailer? 
Obviously, I know what's in the trailer. I've played the game like 70 times over, but okay. Now, that doesn't look bad. That doesn't look bad at all. The Lucasfilms insignia, that's what I was talking about. No. Um, but that does not look bad at all. I loved 2. 2 is the first one I completed, ironically. And then I went back and played 1, and I was like... <gasps> And found out the, you know, ball drop ending because I found out the ball drop ending in this one. And I was like, oh, 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 that's so awesome. So not spoiling anything, but I loved this game because it came out in that time to where you had that Jedi Knight Academy series. You had that Jedi Knight uh, games with Luke and all that. And this, you're like, I'm actually a Jedi. I got all these powers. Look at that. Even though it was turn-based, it was still really cool. Which one did you like better, old man? One or two? One. I liked one better. Even though two is the, technically the better game, one started at all. I'd ask Big Brother, but he doesn't even remember playing the first one. Um, He was probably in too much pain. Well, I mean, that's, a kind, of, that's kind of a given. But no. All right. Fair enough. But the sequel actually had a lot of people uh, really supporting it. Just like I, I mean, both games were amazing. I loved both of them. I loved the planets you went on both of them. The story was amazing with both of them. Um, restored content DLC set to arrive post launch. But you know, it's just a nice game that I saw that I really liked. That it was the first two games I bought when I got. A Steam account originally. And I remember I was in my ex fiance's house and I had the computer there. And I was like, oh, man, I can game. And I could game this on that computer that I had there. And I bought one and two. And I started replaying them again. The, these were my, like, go-to games. I loved these games. Because Star Wars is, speaks to a special place in my heart. Why it's so much. Uh, that's why it's, like, all the content in the show coming up besides our guest. But th something else that I would have loved, that's this next story in the live folder. <coughs> There's actually pictures from the tweet below for this. Um, because a canceled Marvel MMO. <sighs> Give it time to load and go up. A little bit more. A little bit more. There you go. And if you click on it, it should probably uh, bring you over to just full screen. There we go. Hey, there we are. So, canceled Marvel MMO that will never be. And they got a couple of good pictures here. This one I like, the X-Men, Avengers, S.H.I.E.L.D., Fantastic Four. You're picking your faction. And that would depend on your super role in that. It's kind of ironic that this is coming out because um, the DC one just just uh, came out not too long ago in beta. Another one? No, though it, it was like DC one... Universe Online has been around forever. I not, love not game. DC Online, not DC Online. Uh, oh, there's different one. A, there's a different one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna go mute myself. I'm gonna get uh, Dave on the line see if he got the email. Okay, but uh, the screenshots from the canceled at Marvel MMO from Daybreak. Scroll to a, or uh, click on the uh, arrow there for a couple more of these because these are actually really good. Um, here you have obviously costume, that's a given. But you see the electricity around them, so that's obviously a different kind of power set. Probably a, electricity or speed. Um, the the next one, which I'm also a very big fan of, the cell shaded. Um, styling of this. It's almost like uh, Into the Spider-Verse kind of styling and, you know, the different kind of options that you can have cre uh, character creator-wise. Um, <clears throat> a little patch over your eye, a circle like Domino. Um, what's the next picture? Hopefully something more entertaining. There we go. Picking your powers. Zap. Be electrocution, you know, be like Electro. You can have... <clears throat> all that different kind of stuff, man. Select your name and all that. And there may be another one. Oh, just a different angle. 
Well, that's there you go. Dangerous electricity. So being able to have it something that you'd be able to go through. Like there was a game back in the day with uh, X Men, X Men Destiny, and it was kind of like this, to where you picked your mutant power, you went through the story, and it wasn't great, and that's what killed it. It was just a good premise, and <clears throat> with this, I mean, this would I kind of feel like with cell shaded, you know, kind of character creation like this and a nice end of the world you're now an avenger x-men or fantastic four whatever even bring it into the comics do like a judgment day kind of uh spinoff it'd be cool man a lot of different body options and different kind of customizations and stuff so it's a, sh a game that it's a shame that we won't be able to see uh Ramiro Galan, a uh, principal designer of Pi Pixel Kings, posted these screenshots over on Twitter and Behence accounts. I have no idea what Behence is. I'm imagining an, a new social media of some sorts. But it was the MMO that could have been. Um, yeah, man, it's just such a shame that you'd have uh, a comic book styled game like this that just will never come to fruition something that will come to fruition is this next live story which is ironic i call this folder the live folder and it's the only part of the show that's not live <clears throat> indiana jones 5 releases an image and that's it but obviously harrison ford in his classic fedora and whip on another outing as the famed archaeologist Indiana Jones, his fifth big screen adventure is being directed by James Mangold, produced by Kathleen Kennedy and Frank Marshall. So, after the last one, what was that? Crystal please Skull? Admit. Uh, admit, please. Hey, welcome. So, this is perfect, because we're at the end of our live folder, and <clears throat> we have our guest. He is getting, he is getting prepared. He's going to be setting up in a minute. Excellent. Well, there we go. How <laughs> The animation. That's why I did it like that. I had it scrolled down. I clicked on our page, <laughs> and I scrolled down real quick, and then I was like, oh, he's going to scroll up, and then pop out. Anyway, that's what you get when you load <laughs> onto our page. Just to remind you guys. But Indiana Jones 5, how do you feel about this old man? Where do you want to see Indiana Jones go? Um, where hasn't he gone is the question. That well, he was playing around with alien crystal skulls in the last one, right? Yeah, which well, we're, we're kind of wiping that one off the I, off the I did not mind that one. I like that it's one. Not a, it's not a bad movie. It's Fist just... He can't hear it's, you. Oh, I'm sorry. That was me. Sorry. Oh, so you turned it down. <laughs> oh. I turned it down because of the violin. Mm -hmm. It was going to get double echoed. There you go. But, yeah, no. I I, I like that one, man. They had the, the ancient, like, stone alien spacecraft where you just had to put that missing pillaged head back on the body. Yeah. And boom, it was gone. So, so you had to check yourself at the door. Then you yeah, transported you to another dimension, don't just like reality. <laughs> Here's the lesson of that last one. Don't take something that's not yours. Yeah, it's not your head. Leave it alone. That's the moral of the story. It was a crystal head that you ignored. Don't steal <laughs> it. It'll make you crazy. Um, Kelly's going to call me for a quick vice. I'll be right back. A vice? Oh, he's giving you a like, digital no, download no, over the phone? I'll, I'll, I'll be right back. Sure. He loves the face down. Oh, so big brother, Indiana Jones. What kind of uh, ancient culture do you want him to focus on? Like, I mean, he hasn't gone to Atlantis. I'd like to see that. Yeah, I don't know about that. I mean, that's a half baked idea I just thought of. So probably not that. You guys should think of a lot something a lot better than my half baked idea in two seconds. But um. 
I don't know, man. I was kind of thinking about this prehand, but something like ancient Greece or ancient Rome would be cool. Yeah. Like searching yeah. for the scepter. Generally, of there's always or... Nazis involved, so so it'd have to be something the Nazis would want. Let's go to. Have you been to India lately? Um, Probably did he go not. there in the last one? That was no. the first one. Yeah, that was the first one. You can have him go to like China. India or China. Ooh, I don't know about that. Um, I mean, you don't really have to go to China. Oh yeah, you can just have movie China. China. They do that all the time. Go to go to China. Okay. Movie China. You know what, man? Those terracotta warriors. You have something to where some ancient sci-fi thing like brings the terracotta warriors back to life. Mm-hmm. And then it's Indiana Jones and this new guy and a whole bunch of terracotta warriors coming back. That'd be cool. Yeah. Welcome back, Dave. As long as hey, how's it going there? Sorry about the... Uh, uh, Video showing my wife's name. Hold on, let me fix that. There we go. Boom. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we were uh, just talking about Indiana Jones Five that was just released oh, wow. in our nice. It's the band or something. I thought there was like a, a still from the film. There it is, right behind you. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. It's that's it. That's literally the story. But we're in the end credits, which we put after our live show in the YouTube and on the Spotify. Um. What are your thoughts on this? I've been asking, where would you like to see Indiana Jones go? Because Big Brother and myself, we did not actually mind the Crystal Skulls that much, especially on a second watching. So here's my big picture, right? I'm a huge fan of the Indiana Jones series. I did not find Crystal Skull as entertaining as the others, but that's fine. It wasn't like I hated it or disliked it greatly. But I think that they don't have a choice in this sense, right? Like. If you look at the very first film, it's definitely a old school, it would have been a black and white serial adventure type of film, right? Very reminiscent of the 30s, right? Mm -hmm. The second film was very reminiscent of like an adventure mythological, which was very reminiscent of the late 30s, early 40s. Then you have the third film, which was just like the 40s. So what comes next? Naturally, a sci-fi film like the 50s. Yeah. So whatever they're going to do here is going to have to follow that sequence. So it's going to be in line with maybe 60s, 60s. hippie peace culture, war in a jungle, a something like that with the mythological element. That's my feeling. But I'm excited to see what they do. Big picture. Huge fan. Obviously, love Harrison Ford. I love the concept. I'm, I'm excited to see them try something new and different. I'm not sure who's directing, though. Does anybody know? Um, ba, ba, ba. It is uh, directed by James Mangold and produced by Kathleen Kennedy and Frank Marshall. Yeah, Frank, I think he produced the first few as well. Kathleen, obviously, everybody knows President Lucas. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Film. Yeah. People love to yeah, hate good. her. What's that? People love to hate her, uh, Kathleen Kennedy. I mean, we it's May, so... A tradition we started was rewatching all of the Star Wars movies. Yeah, when Congress passed that law. <laughs> As they should. Everyone knows that law. <laughs> but we we got to the sequel trilogy, and a part of me cringes because of what it could have been if you just had J.J. J. Abrams direct the whole thing. But that being said, um, apparently abusive personality or just everybody is wrong, Joss Whedon's version. There are parts I liked, but there were way more X marks on the test on that one than the other two. Well, let me unpack some of that. So first off, like any organization, you've got a leader who is going to take the blame rightfully or wrongfully for a lot of decisions that happen underneath. So Kathleen may not have been involved in every single direct decision. In fact, she can't be. You can't bring her into every staff meeting. Should this lightsaber look this color? Should the characters go this way? She's got to give some autonomy to some of the the folks beneath her. So she's going to fall on her sword where it's necessary, I think. I mean, just in my Mm -hmm. own experience as well, you you have to do those things, and plus what you see professionally. But that being said, I would disagree with you. I don't think J.J. Ambrose running all three would have made them better in any Mm -hmm. sense or shape or form. They might have been more coherent than they now appear. Yes. But here's what you miss, right, when you do that. You've got somebody who is known for rebooting, throwing mm-hmm. old material out, saying, I don't like that idea. Let's completely revitalize things, sometimes for no reason. Uh-huh. A lack of planning for three different series trying to put it together when Star Wars is known for its conceptualized 
growth and amongst the three stories. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, you've got this idea that let's throw it to Ryan Johnson. Brilliant idea, brilliant cinematography, really wonderful concepts. It missed the mark for some fans. Some fans liked it. Some fans couldn't even get past the fact that it was different than things were. Mm. And, and you've got a base that's so divided between I hate the prequels, I love mm. the originals, I don't want anything else, I don't want to see anything but you know cold black steel that reflects everything type of stuff. It's a very, very tough, narrow target to hit. That being said, you, you could what if all day. I think, personally, I'm not a huge fan of the, the sequels. I love all the Star I really, really love all the Star Wars stuff, so I'm a bit of an apologist. I do love some of the things in The Last Jedi. There are things in the last film I really don't like, but you know what? And, and I think, like, to me, this is why films are so amazing. They're so complex. You can have a terrible film with great music. You can have a great film with writing and everything else is terrible. You can have half of it look good, half of it look bad, and everybody hates it. There's always something to me redeeming in these films. The, the cast, I think, did such an outstanding job in the films. I mean, I just totally felt for them as cinematography. Yeah, there's some missteps and mistakes, but, you know, here's the other thing, too. Now, now you've got Disney owning and watching this. This is a $5 billion baby. They don't want this thing to slip, so they had to play it super safe, you know? We're going to get into so much more of this Star Wars conversation and after our little interview segment with you, but this is going to be a great podcast. That's all I picked up because well, I don't want to let any ideas out. As well. well, since you're here, <laughs> by the way, thank, you, start. <laughs> thank you, Dave. Thank you. <laughs> but thank first you. thing. Nice to talk to you guys. Take care. Have a great day. Thank you very much. <laughs> first thing we want them to do is to hit that <laughs> subscribe button right above my head is going to be the very best per jangers and wall hangers video for you right above our cardboard kelly is going to be every single triforce podcast in a playlist and of course our podcast does not stop until we hear our main man connor say bye bye, bye. 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 <laughs>